your frontline staff are the ones who are dealing with these customers day in, day out. They understand what a good customer journey is. They understand what makes them a good agent. Do, do you know what I mean? They, yeah, they are sure. dealing with these customers every single day. And um, we, you know, as conversation designers, we need to listen to them to understand where our bot may be failing. Welcome to Conversations That Matter, a podcast from Unifor. Here, we explore the latest customer experience trends, sales insights, innovations in AI and automation, and more with well-known thought leaders and industry experts. Tune in and join the conversation. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Conversations That Matter. I'm your host, Randy Kassar, and I'm excited for today's podcast, and I hope you are. And so today we are talking with a conversational connoisseur. He has experience on the customer service side as well as designing chatbot experiences for the Admiral Group. He is a senior chatbot conversational designer, and it's none other than Ben Hazel from the Admiral Group. So Ben, welcome. Hello. Thank you for having me. So thanks for joining us. I'm so excited uh, that you're here. You're tuning in from across the pond, as they say, uh, and uh, I'm excited to to speak to you. And so we got connected via LinkedIn, and we wanted to talk more about how conversational AI fits within the chatbot experiences and kind of your experiences uh, and what you're building over there. And uh, as we start with uh, the podcast, we always talk about myths, kind of debunking them, and wanted to get your take on what is one myth that you would like to debunk around conversational AI in the enterprise. Um, so, you know, you, you mentioned that and, uh, sent in a conference in, uh, presenting in a conference in London, yeah. I should say. Um, and what we're going to talk about is how hiring from within helped us build more, uh, more technical builds for one of our bots. And yeah. I, I'm a big believer that you don't need to have five, six, seven plus years of experience to be a conversation designer. Um, you can enrich the staff that you currently have within your contact centers like myself. Yeah. Um in and you know, teach the, you know, give them the tools and give them the time and dedication in order to for them to go out and learn this role and, and be a success. Um and you know, I think I think they certainly proved that with me. Um, where yeah. I, I'm lucky enough for my company in, enrich the time and effort within myself to be able to be better at the job, to go away, to learn, to read, to research. And here I am now, you know, speaking on a podcast with yourself, for example, and <laughs> presenting yeah. in uh, no, but, and presenting in London in a couple of weeks' time. And I never would have thought that three years ago, which is how long I've, well, almost three years ago, I've been doing the role. And I just, yeah. I, you know, listening to the podcast previously and talking, you know, with my peers networking inside and outside of Admiral, obviously. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say they just fell into the role or they, you know, during they just come across it or it's just something that piqued their interest, which just kind of proves that conversation designers are everywhere. They can come from loads of different backgrounds. And I, I just, I just think that you don't need three letters after your name or you don't need to have, <laughs> X, Y, Z skill, yeah, um, or uh, degree. You can you can learn this skill ultimately from within your own organization, and it, it'd be great if there's a point where. And to be fair, I think it is catching on a bit now that organizations are promoting more from within, um, which is yeah. which is great to see and giving people loads of opportunities for this. What I think is a, a brilliant uh, profession and a rewarding experience. Whoever works in it. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, tell us about your experience. So, you you said uh, you know you've been working there for for a few years, but let's kind of go way back. What was your first uh, job? Let's talk about that. My first job. So, my first job. Yeah. Um, it's I probably was... not related to conversational design. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, my my first job. I worked in a nursing home uh, okay. as as a carer. So, um, you know, it takes I a lot of with... patience. Yeah, yeah, and I worked with um, elderly patients who suffered from things like dementia and yeah. um, um, physical ailments, which meant they couldn't walk, couldn't move. Um, so you know, you you take care of them, you know, feed them, yeah. uh, change them, clean them, all 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 that kind of really rewarding experience. Yeah. Um, and that was my my first job. And then what got you into kind of the technology side so, of things? Yeah. 
how did you kind of transition over to that? Um, I suppose I've always liked technology from a young kid. I suppose in part, maybe in part that generation whereby we we kind of. So I was born in eighty six, so I'm thirty seven years of age. So I've gone through living um, through the analog stage, so to be you know born in analog and transformed into digital as it came along and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's always been like wow moments uh, along the way, I suppose, in life in general. Um, and, you know, it's just something I've always been interested in. In, in terms of how it got to conversation design, um, it yeah. was uh, during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't actually looking at conversation design. At first, I was um, I enrolled in a open university degree for cybersecurity. Okay. And... Um, I, I wanted to get into a technological role in order to enhance my skills further. And this this role came up um, within Admiral. They were looking for the, the first set of conversation designers, mm-hmm. um, uh, myself and one of my colleagues, Jess Pope, um, were the first two that we had um, within the UK motor section, mm-hmm. or the UK armors insurance, I should say. And um, I never looked back, to be quite frank. I changed my degree. So I went from cybersecurity to IT and design yeah. uh, to learn the basics of like design in general and learn you know, basics of coding and everything like that. Yeah. And I, I, just, I, I just fell in love with it, I suppose, is the best way to put it. Do you know what I mean? I, <laughs> I just, what I, one of my favorite things about conversation design, I, I want to say, is outside of the work is the community. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. you mentioned, you reached out to me on LinkedIn. Yeah. The amount of resource and the amount of people who are willing to help someone in this field is just it's amazing. Incredible. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, like, you know, fam- big people in the sector as well. Like, when I was starting out, I, I, I didn't know, I didn't have LinkedIn. I didn't know to work LinkedIn. Is, is I just always find it kind of scary, I suppose. Um, <laughs> I, so on Twitter, I reached out to Hilary Black, who's well known in the conversation design world, yeah. and uh, she gave me a load of different advice, different tips, different websites, and so did Rebecca Evano, who's a co-author of um, Conversation with Things, yeah. and it was just like, you know what I mean? I'm a complete stranger to them, and it helped me, you know, on my journey, I suppose. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, well, you know what? We gotta have them on the podcast next time. So I'll definitely uh, need to reach out to them on Twitter. If that's the spot. <laughs> so I'll definitely hit them up. Um, <laughs> they are on LinkedIn. They are on. LinkedIn. They are on LinkedIn as well. All right, no, no worries. I'm on both. Um, so let's uh, dive into kind yeah, of conversational yeah. AI. Uh, I really want to talk. Let's talk about the technology side of things. Um, so from your experience, yeah. uh, you know what problems does conversational AI solve uh, from a customer experience standpoint? I mean, why why is it uh, needed, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, I can only obviously speak from either my own personal experience in using voice and chatbots or from yeah. the, the work that I do, which is in the insu- you know, insurance. Yeah. And so if we take the insurance uh, angle, how, you know, how many people actually want to speak to their insurance company? Uh, I'm willing to bet it's not that many and they only really want to speak to them when they're either going to be changing something on their policy or have to make a claim. And yeah. touch wood, they don't have to make a claim because no one really, you know what I mean? You so, try not to get to that point, yeah. Exactly, you know what I mean? So this is where conversational AI comes in is for the for the kind of journeys, if you will, or for the queries a customer could have that yeah. can be quick and simple and can um, re- require them not to wait in a phone queue or wait in a messaging queue to be serviced by an agent. Yeah. If, if a chatbot or voice bot is there and can go, you know, for, for example, a common query, um, I need my no claims bonus. If you had a chatbot just coming up and going, no problem, this is where you can get it, go to your portal or your, your self-service portal or whatever, and yeah. you'll see it here, download it, et cetera. That's a much smoother, slicker journey than the customer waiting, waiting, Getting through to someone, having that, then waiting for that someone to send it to them. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so I would say um, that's where it comes in. That's where it helps. It makes customer journey smoother, slicker, 
Um, and you know, let's be honest, from a business side, obviously it helps it helps uh, clear up the the cues, if you will, to deal with conversations right. which might be more delicate or um, you know need need more of a, a human input. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say to that. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I mean, that's definitely. Um, I, I I think we all see the need there. So that's I love how you put it, especially in the insurance industry. Um, there's times where you want to um, kind of tackle those mundane tasks or not tackle those mundane tasks as an agent and have the conversational AI technology and the platform to handle it. Mm-hmm. And there's times where you want to talk to them, right? And for you know some more yeah. in depth, you know, um, challenge that may be uh, coming your way. So. Totally understand that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It's, it's that element of choice for a customer as well. It's like one of the things that we all well, that we always try to build in within our mm-hmm. our conversation design is giving the customer an option. So, for example, yeah. if if we so let's take the No Claims Bonus example again. Yeah. We have a we do have a chatbot on our contact us website that will say mm-hmm. if a customer goes, "I want my No Claims Bonus," they'll direct them to to log in to their uh, what we call my account to their portal and mm-hmm. they can see it and download it there. However, right. we also have a button at the end of this um, copy that just says other options. And that gives the customer, you know, they don't want to log in. So let's give them the other options, which is right. to contact us. And, you know, if the first part is to make, you know, you give the easiest option, what you believe for the customer, then always give the second option, I would say, to make so the customer has a choice at the end of the day, you know, very omni-channel yeah. kind of um, thinking in terms yeah. of we should be able to service the customer how they want to be serviced. Yeah, right, right on point. Yeah, totally what, what they want to do. Um, so, I mean, it brings up an interesting question uh, that we talked about before is um, but before we were uh, recording in our prep call around conversation AI isn't just a chatbot. You know, I think that's a myth in itself. A lot of people just think, especially on the consumer side, that's what they think. Um, especially mm-hmm. as you know, OpenAI uh, started making waves back in December. Um, you know, how would you answer? How would you answer that uh, when, if someone were to come to you and say, "Oh, it's just a chatbot"? How would you answer that? Uh, I would say, conversationally, AI is about designing a journey, designing the whole context of how a customer has come into said bot, if you will. You know, it's not just thinking about what is the bot going to say, it's thinking about why is the customer there? What do they want? Where do they want to go? Um, what do you have to take into account? So, for example, a claim perspective, you know, they want to make a claim. Now, we don't know what, how, you know, it depends on the technology that you have within your chat bot or voice bot, but you yeah. might have a, a bot that, isn't like linked into the, the account, for example. Right. So you don't, yeah. you don't know what type of customers you are really servicing at that point. So you don't know if it's their first claim or their, their tenth claim. They might be used to the experience, or they might be scared, yeah, yeah. worried. You know, every you know, what do I do? Have no you know, fish out of water, no idea. Yeah. So you you have to design with that in mind, and it's taking the whole customer journey into perspective. And it's easy to say conversationalize just a chat, but it's. Oh, oh, and I, I, I suppose I understand why people will say that, but it's more about what we, what we can, what we as companies, organizations, whatever the bot is doing, it's more what we can do for the customer. We always have to think from a customer perspective: how are they feeling in that moment, and how will they feel at the end? How can you word something so they're not yeah. intimidated by you? Because insurance is a perfect example. How insurance jargon. You, you know what I mean? It's yeah. it's out there. You read terms and conditions, everything like that. You know, yeah. the booklets are pages long. Yeah. So how there, can we make formalities there that you need to keep in? Yeah. Exactly. And outside the regulatory or legal wording, how can we design a conversation that's both engaging, reassuring, efficient, speed yeah. to answer, brilliant, you know, and ultimately a great customer experience? Because that's what it is really all about. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I'm glad you guys are thinking that way. Um, hopefully, uh, those of you that are listening in, uh, let us know what you think about this conversation. And if you agree with what we're just talking about, I think Ben has some great uh, advice for those that are, are building these uh, experiences uh, and kind of the focus on, on CX. Uh, as always, you can uh, do a hashtag. You can uh, post on Twitter or LinkedIn, wherever you want. Hashtag CTM podcast. 
at CTM Podcast, or you can just at mention us on your favorite social network. Um, so as you uh, have gone through this experience yourself, uh, I'm kind of curious, uh, what recommendation would you have for someone that is uh, starting off brand new, they're building a team? What are the, to, to build this uh, experience um, with, you know, conversational AI technology being used, what would be certain team members that and, and their skills and responsibilities? Um, any thoughts around how that team would be formulated? Um, so every, I, from my experience of reaching out and speaking with, uh, like my professionals like myself, that it seems that every company has a different approach, you, you know, yeah. in terms of how the conversational teams, uh, conversational AI teams are, are made up. Um, some may have one conversation designer, one AI trainer, one chatbot builder, as an example, mm-hmm. um, in the team, which I'm in, we tend to do all of them. Do you know what I mean? So we will we wear many hats. We'll do all of it. So um, we will uh, write the bot copy. We will review the bot copy. We'll review the existing conversations going on. We'll build the intents. We'll train the intents. We'll yeah. build the actual flows, design the flows, design the architecture, um, and depending on the platform, you know, the build of the chatbot itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so all taking all that into account. The team that you want, it, it, per, I, I think you you want traits, I, I suppose. Um, yeah, that's a good way of saying it. Um, yeah. And mine would be customer focused, have to be customer focused, customer first in everything. Because ultimately, regardless of your service, if you're not servicing the customer right, then your service is not going to be great. And then if your service is not going to be great, what does that say? You know, and the, the knock on effect of that. Um, You've got to, you know, I, I think I mentioned this now prep call is that outside of CDI services, uh, so Conversation Design Institute, yeah. um, there's no recognized like degree path for this right now. Right. We're still, it's, still in, it's still a new occupation, so to speak, yes, um, with it, within the world. So um, that's constantly changing uh, as the technology changes, I suppose, as well. Yeah. So you have to want you have to have people who want to do the work in terms of go out there, look for resources, learn things off YouTube, learn things off your peers, go out there and network and understand how other places are doing it and things like that. Don't be expected to be the, to be kind of um, it to all just come to you if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. If you want to make your bot better, um, and you know, I'm just speaking from personal experience. I, I would, you know, I'm not saying that every bot that I've built is the perfect article because it isn't <laughs> far from, but it's much better now than it was three years ago. And that's <laughs> yeah. because of late night calls, listening into US conversation designers, so midnight in the UK, you know, uh, yeah. that kind of stuff. Do you, do you mean willing to do that work? Um, and all, and I suppose the last one is um, thinking outside the box for me. Because yeah. think of new ways in which something can be built. Just because you've done like 10 tutorials on how to build a pizza bot or a bank ordering bot, or, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean that that is the right way. Like yeah. I said, it's still a new occupation. It's still a new ways of thinking. There's still there's new technologies coming out nearly every week now yeah. that we have to <laughs> keep up like with. It, yeah. yeah, you know? Um, and we have to understand how different things are built and... Uh, and things like that. And one yeah. of the things that we'll go that I, that myself and my colleague Mike Larcher are going to go through in the conference in London is yeah. how how we focused on designing and building our tents differently to how these you know labs and things like that tell us how to build them, and how yeah. we think the way we've built them now allows for a broader customer journey in terms of being able to service more journeys by also but also recognizing the intent better. Gotcha. Um, which, which you know, it, we haven't seen before. If that makes yeah, sense, yeah. doesn't mean it's not already done. It's not already out there. It's just something that we've learned along the way from our learnings and research. So that's a good segue. So, in, in terms of metrics, what are some of the metrics that you look at uh, to help you uh, kind of optimize the experience? And also, what are some of the metrics uh, that you're looking at to kind of achieve your goals? Yeah. And maybe the better question is, like, we're not looking for something that is, you know, your 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 particular metrics for your own company, but 
what should other people look at? You know, so the ones that are list- our listeners that are listening in. Um, so you, you know, you got to see if you you bought is understanding, I suppose, the customer utterance uh, from the start. I suppose it depends yeah. on what kind of journey you've built for your customer. Uh, you could start off with being very button driven, which means that um, you know our customers clicking the buttons in the way that you'd expect them to just because yeah. you ask a yes or no question don't expect a yes or no answer do you know what i mean so yeah. it's it designing for that um so how many uh you know hitting you know a fallback if you will uh what's the percentage of that i remember attending a talk about a year and a half ago um and um there was a, a gentleman speaking and he explained that he believes the industry standard for fallback percentage should be uh, under 10 percent um, so, you know, striving to, you know, keep your fallbacks under. So the bot recognizing yeah. 90% of, of the utterances. I suppose the other side of it, that then is of that 90%, how many is it recognizing accurately? So is it <laughs> is it bouncing around your model, I suppose? You know, is, yeah. uh, um, are the customers bouncing around, you know, or I want to... Um, I, I want to order a pizza is actually going to, I want to order pasta. Do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's you know, the intricacies of that um, in, in terms of uh, what I would say in measuring was a successful bot. Um, you know, I've talked, a couple of, I've said this a couple of times already, but, you know, customer focus at the end of the day, you know, we, you know, you have surveys at the end of your automated journeys you know, ask the customer how they felt the experience was for them. Yeah, have have surveys at the end of your of your you know your agent journeys that have also been where whereby also sorry the customers interacted with the bot firsthand. So mm-hmm. you know they've gone through a bot. A bot can't service them, or it's designed not to service them in terms yeah. of just taking for to save the agent time doing something. Yeah. Then how was the whole experience for the customer? Um. You mentioned so, one. You mentioned one thing. Sorry to interrupt uh, about the agent experience. I mean, there should be a survey that the agent takes. Yeah. To make sure that did they get all the information that they needed to make a, an, an educated decision or to escalate something that they needed to escalate or. Yeah, that's it, a, that's always a a good thing to kind of focus on too, right? It hundred percent and communication, I think, is paramount communication with your stakeholders with the people who are going to be interacting with customers who have interacted with the bots yeah um that that kind of communication and taking on the feedback not just going you know oh well it's the bot it's fine do you know what I mean or you know i designed yeah. this amazingly what are you talking about no you know your frontline staff are the ones who are dealing with these customers day in day out they understand what a good customer journey is they understand what makes them a good agent? Do you know what I mean? They yeah, they sure. dealing with these customers every single day, and um, we you know as conversation designers, we need to listen to them to understand where our bot may be failing, or if it's not a great experience, why isn't it a great experience? Can we improve the bot, yeah. or is it more on the process side? Is it more on the agent side, kind of thing, or in terms of well, maybe sure. you know this bot is here to stay. So we need to improve yeah. this side of it in order to make it synced up. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it has nothing to do with technology. <laughs> it has it, all to exactly, do with process, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, this is awesome. Uh, and uh, so this uh, conference I have coming up, the Conversational AI Summit in London, um, you're going to be talking about <laughs> conversation designs are everywhere, how hiring internally helped Admiral focus on a more technical build. Yeah. Um, and you're doing it with a coworker, right? Is that right? Yes, that's right, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, so definitely, uh, we'll put that in the show notes, uh, and we'll make sure to send that out on social. I think that's a great conference to attend. Have you attended that one before? No, no, I haven't. And this is my first time speaking at a conference, just like this first time doing a podcast. So, um, <laughs> <You're doing great. laughs> um, so yeah, I'm pretty, uh, nervous, should we say? Yeah. You know, <laughs> speaking in front of, uh, peers who probably know more than what I do. So it's like, um, it's, it's, it's. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. a, a great experience. I I know that. Um, yeah, for sure. It, it's just um, that thing of standing up in front of people, not wanting to make a fool of yourself, obviously. <laughs> and um, hopefully that you bring something to the table as well. You know, you don't. You know, yeah. At, at the end of the day, 
people pay good money to attend these conferences and donate <laughs> it's, to a damn, a damn script, you. So, yeah. <laughs> so no, I think you're doing just fine. Hopefully, this is a good practice, kind of, kind of sharing your story. Yeah. So I, I appreciate uh, what uh, the advice that you've been giving so far. It's been great. Um, and all those that are listening in. I mean, if you guys are listening in and uh, you want to give a, a, you know, a good luck to uh, to Ben and, uh, <laughs> you, know, and you know, that would be awesome. Give him a thumbs up emoji or something like that, or a clapping emoji. That would be awesome. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the future. The future is, uh, ha- you know, as you said, the you know, technology is changing so so fast. Uh, what are your thoughts on where you see computational AI in the next, let's just say, year? Because, I mean, it's, I didn't know what was happening back in uh, in January. So I'm just going to yeah. give it a year. Um, I mean, I don't, uh, the honest answer is, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, is the honest answer of my personal yeah. is and my that's okay. I, I, yeah. I, I, I feel you, man. Like, I mean, we don't know. I mean, look <laughs> at the news just today, just today that Jeffrey Hinton has resigned from Google, like the godfather yeah, of AI, who's, yeah. you know, groundbreaking research helped GPT be GPT. Like, do, do you yeah. know what I mean? He's resigned. He's come out with an interview with the ty- in New York Times basically saying that, um, it's worrying where AI is going. Yeah, you have people like uh, Elon Musk and uh, other uh, big tech leaders saying, you know, signing mem- memorandums saying we should put a, you know, we should put a stop on development for the next yeah, class, kind yeah. of thing. Um, and so where AI is going to be in a year's time is, <laughs> I, I really don't know. You know, in terms of like from a conversation designer perspective. You know, when getting into this and learning more about the role and everything, we obviously understood that my role would change over time. Yeah. You know, um, and it was always going to. Do you know what I mean? And that's, yeah. you know, it's not a bad goal to aim for at the end of the day. You know, but will I be designing conversations more? Will I be writing bot copy, or will I just be curating? So I get a response, and then I have to amend it in some way, if that makes sure. sense. Yeah. That's- um, which. I feel a little bit sad about sometimes because when I when I'm thinking because I get great pride and enjoyment from my bot copy in terms of going, I've come up with that. That looks great. Yeah. It you know we run it through a gun in fog index, for example, to <laughs> the reading age. I've done that first time. You know, I got it signed off with the stakeholders first time. Yeah. Uh, you, you know what I mean? It's a great sense of pride. It's a great sense of creativity that's gone into something. Are, yeah, are we going to lose sure. that slightly? Which makes me a bit. It's sad, I think, uh, thinking about that kind of thing. But yeah. yeah, you know, look, innovation is is happening all the time in AI um, and conversational AI. It, it's exciting and scary, and where we'll be in a year's time, like I said, I, I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> let's, right. let's, let's roll roll the punches and see you where know, it goes. I you know, I think you're the first person that uh, just said the truth, right? Most people are trying to come up with something, <laughs> but you're like, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. That's you all know. right. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get, uh, so thank you so much uh, for answering all these questions. Uh, we're now going to go to the rapid fire section of the uh, podcast. And one of the questions that we always ask on the podcast is if you were calling into a contact center, and there was one person that you could talk to that could ease your pain, could solve your problems. This person could be a celebrity, a musician, an artist, dead or alive. Who would that person be? Um, oh, that's tough. I got two people in mind, one for comedic value and one because <laughs> I just think he's great. Um, yeah. So my the one who I think is great would be Eddie Vedder, which is the lead singer from Pearl yeah, Jam. Pearl Jam, yeah. My favorite band. I love them. Um Me too. for those who are new to them, the first album, ten, may be the best album of all time. Bangers from one to ten. Amazing. Or one to yeah, eleven. I totally agree. I've attended numerous Pearl Jam concerts back yes. in the nineties. Was in the Marsh Pit. <laughs> it was yeah. it was good times. Good times. Um it, for comedic value, it, it's gotta be like Ewan McGregor as Obi Wan, isn't it? Just just to have <laughs> when you ring up, just to have him go, Hello there. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Um, yeah. you know, well, your chatbot's not working. Um, you know what I mean? That kind of, you know, like play on words with the droids. Um, so, yeah, um, they would be one of, you know, what, what any one of them two, basically. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's awesome. All right, cool. Um, what is uh, one thing not on your LinkedIn profile? I love the NFL. Like, love it. Every every aspect <laughs> of it. Really. I just were you watching it. the draft earlier? I was. I, I've watched. I watched it all three days of the draft. Um, <laughs> I I I just can't get enough. I, I watch a, a show every day, Pro Football Talks, on Monday to yeah. Friday. Um, we're lucky enough to get that in the UK. Cool. Um, I I just I just love the NFL. I don't have a team. I just just love the sport. Um, yeah, my, a real root for underdog, so to speak, if you will. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, every, I know everyone has their favorites, especially you know, speak of people from the US and and um, you know, the like some of the fans, the the, the kind of ferocity in which they support their team is it's just like wow. You know, <laughs> like the Bills Mafia, for example, or the, oh, yeah. you know, the Philadelphia crowd. Do you know what I mean? The, the Philadelphia won a Super Bowl a few years ago, and it was right. kind of the next year, right, we won another one. And it's like, whoa, that was your first one in like 50 <laughs> years. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe take it in the moment, <laughs> you know? Um, but no, um, I, I just – they they – great and I'd, I'd love to watch the game in the u.s i, I think I, that would be my all right man we got to make it happen we got to make it happen <laughs> you got to come over here to, to the san francisco bay area the levi stadium yeah, the Fort yeah levi stadium what a stadium I, candlestick park would have been nice to visit but, it it got, <laughs> but then you got soul fire as well um you know yeah. in la so yeah totally yeah yeah cool I, I might already know the answer to this question but if you were to start your own podcast what would it be about <laughs> could maybe nfl <laughs> um yeah um, I don't know. I have so I have a lot of interests. You know, like I, you were talking to me earlier uh, before the podcast uh, about uh, your uh, love for uh, heavy metal music. You're going to a music yeah. festival coming up pretty soon. Yeah, so the Download Festival is coming up in June in the UK. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I I like all types of rock music. I suppose it's, I yeah, go yeah. through phases. So yeah, um, yeah. like metal music and you know, indie rock, you know, so Pearl Jam, like they are my favorite band of all time. But at yeah. the moment, believe it or not, I'm listening to a lot of like dark and like dirty blues, you know, old school blues, Roger Johnson cool. kind of blues. Nice, um, I love a slide guitar. It's like a slide guitar and a harmonica just for me fills the song. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, you know what I mean? It's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> all right. Um, uh Awesome. Yeah. And then uh, last question that we have is, what is your best day? If you were to My end the day, day, you're like, man, that was an awesome day. What would be your best day? And it doesn't have to be work-related. It could be work and personal-related. Like, What would be your best day? Best day would be uh, maybe I'll, I'll split into morning, afternoon, and evening in terms of so morning, wake up, early coffee, gym into work i don't know it could be a release day release goes you know new chatbot is released <laughs> yeah no yeah. hitches that the area you know it's gone absolutely <laughs> like a dream i've taken on a half day holiday um come home take my three daughters out somewhere you know i got three daughters so it, it would yeah. probably end up be shopping or something like that let's be honest <laughs> and I, I even though i'm not a although my middle one is bit of a tomboy so we might go and watch a game of rugby or something um <laughs> and have a, a nice evening meal i suppose then with my wife and my and my three my three daughters we got a, a local pub down the road the colliers which serves lovely food and um awesome. yeah so maybe i think that and then just come home and chill and watch watch a, a really good film you know like a mood a mystery film or uh, i thought you're gonna say like nfl films <laughs> well you know if it's during if it's during the season in the off season <laughs> in the NFL, you know. <laughs> awesome man well thank you so much uh for your time today i really appreciate it no problem I really appreciate you asking me to come on i loved every minute of it thank you awesome man well thanks everyone for tuning in it's been another episode of conversations that matter you guys have a great day and as always hit us up on the social networks uh use the hashtag ctm podcast or email us at podcast at unifor.com have a great day everyone we hope you enjoyed this episode of conversations that matter subscribe to our podcast for more great content and if you want to learn more about the topic we discuss visit unifor.com today